Hello. I want to review some of what we did the last week we were together with linear equations, uh, just in case you forgot. And then I want to talk about exponential equations as well. So you may remember when we last had class, uh, linear equations were equations that had a constant rate of change. Um, basically this means um, we might add the same number over and over or subtract the same number over and over. But a lot of our equations look something like this. We relate it to an algebraic equation of a line. y equals mx plus b, or maybe there's a subtraction in there. Um, but over here, the b, that was represented of some starting value. <clears throat> and the m was a rate of change. If you think about it graphically, it was a slope. Uh, the X was an input, the Y was an output, and we could use any letters there we wanted if it was if we were trying to give a better representation. So very quickly, here's an example. Um, we're trying to write a linear equation. It says you're attending a county fair and plan to ride rides. Uh, you have thirty dollars, and each ride costs a dollar fifty. So we're going to write an equation that talks about how much money we have left after we ride so many rides. So the starting amount we had was 30 for $30. And then X is the number of rides we ride. And we have a negative 150 here because it says we're going to pay $1.50 for each ride that we get on. So the 150 is the rate of change and our amount of money is going down. That's why it's a negative. And the 30 is the constant or the starting amount. That's how much we started with. Um, so with that in hand, we could come down here and talk about this example that says, how much money will you have after seven rides? And we just plug seven in for our input or our X. And in that case, we end up with $19.50 left over. <clears throat> and we did all this in the last class. Um, here's another example. Um, just trying to kind of make a table. So when we start, we haven't ridden, we have not been on any rides. Um, and we have $30 and after one ride is down to $28.50. Over here after six rides is $21. One thing you'll notice here as far as a linear is every time we changed, it went down $1.50. It changed by the same amount each time. And that's how you tell you have a linear function. Okay. There's some more examples here that you could go through, the exact same things. Um, but we did all that in class and it's been a while. Uh, so I really wanted to get to the meat of why I made this video, which is exponential equations. Um, exponential equation uh, has a common ratio or common multiple. Uh, so down here, I'll just give you the form, which here this y equals a times b to the x where A is a starting amount. Okay, so this is how much we start with. And B is basically a multiplier or a divider. So this would be like we're doubling every time because when we raise that to an exponent, two to the X is two times two times two times two. Where in the linear equation, where if we had two times X, that's just doubling whatever X is. Um, so we're looking for what's happening as far as the ratio or multiplier and the starting amount to write an equation. <clears throat> so here's an example. It says a scientist obtains a bottle of 10 bacteria that is doubling every hour. So if we go back to that model, the starting amount here we start with is 10. Now it's doubling, which means at the end of the first hour we would multiply by 2. We take that number and the end of the next hour we multiply by 2 again. Um, so we're multiplying by 2 over and over. There's a quick little blurb over here. Um, we have 100% of what we started with and we're doubling it. So we're getting another 100%, which is 200 total percent, um, which is 2 when you write it as a number. Um, but we have a starting amount, which was 10, and it's doubling, which means we're multiplying by 2 each time. So 10 times 2 to the x. Now be careful because of order of operations, this is not 20 to the x. This is 10 times 2 to the x, and you'll need to put it in your calculator that way. Um, but we also have a chart down here where when we start, we started with 10. After the first hour, it's doubled, so it went to 20. 
Then the next hour we, we had 20 but it's doubled to 40. Um, so we notice that this is a multiplier each time, times 2, times 2, times 2. Okay? And that's what makes it exponential and not linear. Okay. Here's another model that we can go through really quick. It says you're offered a job with a reputable company. Your starting salary will be 30000 with an annual raise of 4%. <clears throat> So once again, uh, we're putting 4% on each time. So 4% is not the same uh, every year. It's the same percentage, but it's not the same dollar amount. Okay. Um, so we started with 30,000, and then this 1.04 is 100%, which is what we started with, plus 4 more percent. So 104% of our previous salary will be the next year. So we write that as a decimal as 1.04. So we can write the equation. Um, if we want to figure out what our salary would be in 10 years, that's basically putting on 4%, taking the new total, putting on another 4% of the new total, and so on. So it grows rather quickly. Okay. Trying to look here. Same thing here. This is a decreasing by 3%. So we have the original... 100% minus 3%, which is 97% of the original, or 0.97 if we write it as a decimal. Okay. So one thing we're really trying to do is determine if something is linear or exponential. So we've seen examples of both. So what we have here is we just have a, a set of values. So it's easy to see when x is 0 that y is 4. So we know the starting amount is 4, but we got to figure out if it's linear or exponential. So what we would do is we would see, does it change the exact same number each time? If it does, that's linear. Well, right here, uh, we went from 4 to 12, which increased by 8, but then we went from 12 to 36, which is an increase of 24. So it is not linear because we didn't add 8 every time. We didn't add the same number. So we think it's exponential because that's our other option right now. But what we'd really need to do is take two consecutive values and divide them. So what we have here is 12 divided by 4 is 3. So it was multiplied by 3. 36 divided by 12 is also 3. Okay, So we multiply by 3 to get to the next one. And you could try these out again and multiply by 3 again. So the ratio here that we're multiplying by is 3. So the function looks like it's exponential. It looks like a starting value of 4. That's where the table started. And we're multiplying by 3 each time. So it's 4 times 3 to the x. Okay, let's see here. Oops, lost my place. So one last one here. <clears throat> is it linear or exponential? Let's see really quick. We know the starting value is 35. Um, it went down to 21, so it went down by 14. And 21 minus 14 would be, mm, uh-oh, 7. And it didn't go down to 7, so it didn't change by the same number, so it's not linear. So let's assume it's exponential, but let's try it again. Uh, 21 divided by 35 is 0.6. 12.6 divided by 21 is also 0.6, and we've tried a couple of the other ones. So what we're doing here is we're really keeping 60% of the original value, but the multiplier is 0.6. So the equation is over here. 35 is the starting amount times 0.6 to the x, 0.6 being the, the ratio or the multiplier. Thank you.